Hi everybody, welcome back to the Metastellar YouTube channel. My name is Maria Korolov and I am the editor here at Metastellar. Every Friday, a few of us here at Metastellar read the top 10 free science fiction and fantasy books on Amazon. Not the whole book, usually just the first few chapters. And we tell you what we think so you can plan your weekend reading. Today, I was joined by reviews editor Amira, Amira Lutfi and our news editor, Alex Korlov. Unfortunately, neither Alex nor Amira could be here for this taping. I'm hoping they can join me next week. Today's list has Fae Princesses, uh, Telekinetic Witches, Angels, A Demonic Private Eye, A Couple of Different Dystopian Futures, Vampires, Werewolves, and Zombies. So lots of different stuff for everybody. The link to the whole article is in the description box below. For those who are new to the channel, Metastellar is an online magazine of speculative fiction. All the content is always free for our readers. We publish original short fiction, reprints, excerpts, essays, and lots and lots of book reviews like this one. We are able to do this thanks to the kind support of our contributors from Patreon. Here's, here are the ones I'd like to thank. In particular, James Cato is a new contributor um, to the publication. Thanks, James. We love you. All right. And before uh, we get started, uh, I want to remind you guys that our first anthology is out on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Apple Books and Kobo and a bunch of other places, including um, in Europe and Australia. So the links to this are going to be in the description box below as well. It's 41 of the best stories from our first year uh, out of hundreds that we published. So this is a really great book by some of the best new names in science fiction and fantasy and horror. Check it out. Uh, oh, and all the proceeds go to pay for more original fiction. So yay. Um, it's a it's a great uh, thing, a great uh, gift for uh, Christmas maybe, or well, uh, or a back to school. Okay, so um, let's get into the books. Uh, we have, like I mentioned, uh, ten books on this list today, and the first book is. Do I have it? Here we go. The first book is. Immortals of Indriel by Melissa A. Craven. And I was the one, oh, be, before we start reviews, I want to thank Sydney Levinson for the backgrounds. So thanks, Sydney. We we love you and we very much appreciate your work. Okay, so uh, Immortals of Indrian by Melissa Craven is the is the first two of seven books in the Immortals of Indriel Young Adult Urban Fantasy series. The other books in the series are $5 each, and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. So I am not the target audience for the book. Um, and uh, the protagonist, Allie, is 15, and she thinks she's lonely and friendless, but she has a boyfriend, and I mean, she's not comfortable around people, but... She has a boyfriend in the first chapter, and uh, her problem is that her parents move a lot for mysterious, unspecified re reasons. But uh, in the second chapter, she's in a new school, and she meets a new guy right away. So I'm thinking that she's a little whiny and complainy, and she doesn't have all that much to whine and complain about, except whatever the plot of the book is going to be, which I'm sure is going to be earth-shaking and difficult. Uh, but I couldn't get through the whole, you know, she's annoyed with her parents, she's moving to a new school, she's awkward around other kids. I mean, at 15, who isn't? Um, and that's just too much uh, teenage drama for me. Uh, so I'm not going to stick with it. Um, but if you like uh, teenage drama, and apparently a lot of people do, this book is number one on the list. It is very well written and it's very absorbing. Uh, it's easy to get lost in. So if you do like this kind of thing, it's free. 
All right, next is Genesis Code by Eliza Greed, the first of seven books in the Genesis series. The other books are four to five. Four to six dollars each, no, five to six dollars each, and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. This is the second time this book has been on our top 10 list, though this time around has a new cover. Oh, let me show you the cover, the Genesis code. Here it is. There's the cover of the book. Um, we previously, I previously reviewed it in March of 2021. Um, Oh, and there's, I mentioned Kindle Unlimited a couple of times. In case you don't know it, Kindle Unlimited is like Netflix uh, for books or an all-you-can-eat buffet for books. Uh, you pay 10, 10 bucks a month, and you can read all the books you want in Amazon's Kindle Unlimited program. You don't have to own an Amazon Kindle to do this. I read all the books on my on my phone. There's also uh, tablet devices, and you can read them on your laptop. Um, so definitely, uh, it's a great deal if you read a lot of books, and a lot of books are in the program. Uh, last time I checked a few weeks ago, most of the top uh, sci-fi books were in the program, including all the Harry Potter books. So uh, definitely a really, really good deal. Um, but as I mentioned, this series is not in Kindle Unlimited, because aside from brand name authors like J.K. Rowling, Amazon makes authors choose whether they're going to be in Kindle Unlimited or whether they're going to be available in other bookstores. To be in Kindle Unlimited, you have to be exclusive to Amazon Kindle. Uh, the print books, you can still sell it everywhere else, but for ebooks, they want you to be exclusive. Just like if you get a Netflix subscription, uh, you're not going to see Netflix premiere shows on other other streaming networks. I mean, they want it to be exclusive to them. So Amazon wants the Kindle you know, Unlimited stuff to be exclusive to them. So authors who sell their books on other platforms can't have them in Kindle you know, Unlimited. Um, and many of the books on this list aren't in the library apps like Overdrive. So it's a shame um, you have to pay money for them. Okay, so back to the Genesis code. Uh, so the series is set in a future where Earth is owned by a repressive corporation called World Government. And there's a hard-boiled investigator, Bill Taggart, who's in space looking for a criminal race called the Indigenes who may have kidnapped his wife. He drinks a lot of coffee, but otherwise I'm not finding him particularly sympathetic. He's bad at corporate politics. He's judgmental. He takes pills so he doesn't have to sleep. And I think he might be on the wrong side of this issue because um, the indigenes are the native inhabitants of this planet that humans are colonizing and are they're trying to kill off the local population. That's not nice. Uh, so he's in a lot of difficult positions in his personal life, in his job, you know, human survival. All that stuff is a little depressing. And personally, in my life, this past couple of years have been depressing and weird and crazy enough. So um, I'm not a fan of books that make me feel worse. I want books that are a fun, peppy, or kind of fast-paced, comic book exciting kind of read. This book for me didn't do it, but a lot of people do like it. So for them, it's free and it is readable and it does pull you in. I mean, every book on this list is going to be readable. Um, th there's a reason that they're on the top 10 list. Okay, next we have The Wingless Angel by Fabrice Wilfong or Wilfong. Uh, sorry, Fabrice. Um, this is a standalone book of metaphysical fantasy. Usually it's $5, but today it's free because you know, thus it's on the list. And the book is in Canola Limited. So Amira Lutfi says that she was really interested in the book because it won all those book festival awards, as you can see at the top of the, the book cover. Uh, she said the prologue is awesome. It's an excerpt from a guide on how to survive hell until an angel can come and rescue you. 
And in this prologue, there's a lot of rules about how the world works, the dynamics between God, angels, and devils. But she says it's short and straightforward and well-written. So as prologues go, not too bad. Um, then we go into the first chapter where um, our hero is a miserable veteran who lives across from a liquor store. And one day he's being very generous with everyone uh, he sees. Uh, which makes her think that he's thinking about suicide. And the writing style is gritty and nonchalant. Um, and Amira says she likes it. And then the next chapter, um, a woman named Motley is waiting in a waiting room. And the receptionist has lovely shoes made of bones and teeth, which is kind of weird. And uh, the desk is also made of bones. And... Uh, there's a, a man behind the desk who's writing with a blood quill on white skin parchment. So at first, Amira was thinking that this woman is, is uh, dying of cancer, but now she figures that this woman has already died and has passed over to the other side. So Motley is meeting this man for an interview. And uh, she, she finds it really really intriguing um she can see why it won so many awards she thinks it's well written um and she's a big sucker for um books that have do a particularly good job of structure so she says she'll probably be back to finish it uh next is infernal justice by N.P. Martin, the first of six books in the Ethan Drake Occult Suspense series. The other books are four to five dollars each, and they're not in, in Kindle Unlimited. Not a good day for Kindle Unlimited today. I'm disappointed to hear that. Um, Alex read this book, and he says that um, this could be a good fit for people who like detective novels. I'm one of those people, so I'm already curious. Um, he says that this is a classic murder mystery with a demonic twist. Ethan Brake is a detective who's trying to solve a murder, and his partner is a human possessed by a demon. And she's not the only demon that he's got to deal with. Alex says he likes the occult fantasy elements in the story, probably because he enjoyed the show Lucifer and it's a demonic detective. I am a huge fan of Lucifer. It's my number one favorite show. Alex says he read the first few chapters and it definitely pulled him in. And he says he's going to be finishing the book. And I am going to be checking out this book after I'm done with this week's work. Because it sounds really good to me too. Next we have um, Closed Campus by Gail Katz. The first of six books in the Jane Zombie post-apocalyptic science fiction series. The other books are four to five dollars each, and this series is not in Kindle Unlimited. Alex uh, read this one as well. He says that this is a good book for zombie fans. Jane is a college student who just did her first overnight shift as a DJ at her college radio station. And on the way over to work, she noticed some people acting a little odd, but didn't think much of it. Uh, uh, but now that the shift is over, it looks like zombies are on the loose and they're attacking people and things are going just downhill. So Alex says he enjoyed the beginning of this book very much and he wants to keep reading it. And he says it's an easy and entertaining read. Uh, next, we have Kiss of the Blood Prince by Alessa Thorne. The first of six books in the Fae Universe romantic fantasy series. The other books are between a dollar and six dollars each. And the entire series is in Kindle Unlimited. Unlimited. Yes. All right. So uh, I read this book. Um, even though it has faded mates romance, right in the official subtitle. That to me is a bad sign. I'm not a fan of romance. And I'm particularly not a fan of faded mates. Fated mates is where people are destined to be together. And the idea of being forced to be with someone forever kind of creeps me out. Like, 
What if what if you don't like them? What if they're a creep? Well, too bad. You're stuck with them forever. So uh, not my favorite trope. And uh, the book starts out with a series of ecological disasters, massive wildfires destroying billions of acres, freak snowstorms covering Europe and ice, volcanoes are rumbling. England was able to avoid most of the environmental catastrophes so far. And then uh, that's the kind of the, a little intro there. And then the book starts with Elise, who lives near London and takes a train to work. It's a couple of hour commute. She spends a day in a basement office toiling away for a real estate firm, but she'd rather be working on ancient manuscripts at the British Museum. Um, and she has a friend at work, and there's a little bit of a, you know, just regular workplace banter kind of stuff, getting coffee, you know, all that. And then uh, the day is over, she takes the train home, and um, on the way home, on a train, her ebook reader dies, then her phone goes dead, then everyone else's phone on the train goes dead, then the train stops, the doors open, an icy wind blows in, and everyone starts screaming and clawing at each other. I mean, it's just carnage. People are killing each other. And in the middle of all this, a tall man walks in. He has, he's like really weird looking. He's got ivory stag antlers smeared with gold. He's wearing golden armor and has two swords on his back. He's got long white hair and a braid, scarlet eyes, and uh, a golden mask on his face. And nobody else but her seems to notice this. They're all too busy killing each other. Then a golden light pours out of him, and everyone except for Elise drops dead. So uh, he's a fae prince, and behind him is a whole fae army. And he orders the other fae to take Elise back to the camp, there's something about her that you know catches her his interest and his, his fey army is camped out um at stonehenge so uh, the book is actually really good i mean my description of it aside and um and the cover originally threw me off because it looks a little like a handmade cover with that weird font and the uh, really odd choice of graphics but it's actually really good and surprisingly good so I went back and checked and it's got like thousands of positive reviews on Amazon and again it's on the top 10 list so you're not going to have like really horrible books on here but um I found this book to be really engaging even though I'm not usually into this kind of story so I recommend it highly. Check it out. Um, and also the whole series is in Kindle Unlimited. So, whoa. Okay, next is The Sacrifice of One by Emily Fortney. The first of three books in the Camilla Krim Young Adult Religious Fantasy series. The other books are six to seven dollars each and they are not in Kindle Unlimited. So, as I mentioned before, I don't like young adults. I don't like romance. So this book is probably not for me. It's also told in the first person present tense. And that takes me a while to, to get into it. Uh, so it starts out with Camilla Krim, who's a laborer on a farm in a fantasy kind of theme world. And there's a new worker and she's ordered to help him out. Um, and he doesn't look like he's ever worked at farm work before so she, her first task is to take him to get branded and by the time they both get to the fields they're late and she gets whipped and so it's a grim beginning it's it's a very vivid world but it's not like a fun pleasant fantasy romp you know it reminds me a lot of the hunger games so if you like the hunger games i think you would really enjoy this book I did like The Hunger Games, but it was kind of like against my will that I liked it because it's not my usual kind of book. And also it's a different time. You know, dystopias were cool and the cool thing back then. And now, not so much. Well, for me at least, not so much. Um, 
anyway, so um, uh, it turns out that Lawrence has volunteered to work on this farm. Um, and uh, it's very surprising to Camilla because if she was a boy, she'd have joined the military uh, like her brother did. And uh, that night she finds out that uh, her brother's in trouble. He's been accused of murder and he fled. There's, that's that's my cat showing up there. Uh, you can't see her because, hold on, I'll turn off my video uh, background. Uh, nope, that's not it. Uh, there, see, there she is. There's my little kitty cat. Hey cat, say hi to uh, our readers. Yeah, or viewers. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the book. Uh, which book were we on? This one here. All right. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, her brother needs help. Uh, he's hiding out from the military um, because he's been accused of murder. So very compelling, highly readable book. The world building is superb. Um, the place where the story takes place feels really real awful but real so and it's like i said it's a bit too grim for me so i'm gonna pass but um if you like this kind of thing check it out uh next we have um runaway fate and um i'm trying to there there's the book okay um and it's by elizabeth hunter uh and the first, it's the first of three books in a Moonstone Cove paranormal fiction series. The other books are $5 each, and the entire series is in Kindle Unlimited. Yay! And I say yay because I'm planning to finish these books. Uh, so it's actually related to another series um, called Glimmer Lake. Uh, so... There's mentions of events that happened in that other series in the book, but they're not really key or germane to this plot. Um, the characters here are a totally different set of characters from the first series. They just, so far, uh, from what I've read, they just have a couple of telephone conversations, and I've read already half the book. So what happens is... Um, Catherine is a college professor. She's uh, an expert in neurophysics. And she's on a treadmill in her gym in a small town in California when she suddenly sees a vision that one of the other patrons is about to pull out his gun and start shooting people. So, um, so when she sees him going for his, for his waistband, she runs at him, throws herself on him, um, knocks him off the exercise machine, he hits her and a couple of other women step up to help. One of the women reaches for the gun and it just like magically jumps into her hand. And the other one subdues the young man um, again, like almost instantaneously as if by magic. Ha <laughs> ha. And it was magic. I mean, you know, it's going to turn out to be by magic because it's, it's in this category. I'm not giving anything away. Uh, the books, the book is extremely readable. It's light. It's a cozy mystery. The people are all nice and engaging. She has a nice relationship with her husband. Their biggest, um, the biggest uh, worry that they have is whether or not to get a dog. I mean, that's the biggest problem. They're doing really, really well. Um, so I like this town. I like the characters. Um, there, there's a, a story about like what caused the man the young man to go crazy all of a sudden because previously he was um, dedicated to opposing gun violence. So he did the thing that he was most opposed to. And he's not the first one. Something suspicious is going on in town. And they're going to need their new magic abilities to figure it out. So I'm really enjoying it. Like I said, I've already read half the book um, while I was having my lunch. And I'm going to finish it and probably finish the other two in a series. And then I'm going to go read that the book that Alex recommended with that uh, demonic detective. Okay, next we have um, A Fae Curse by Eve Hunt. The first of three books in the You Queen 
uh, urban fantasy series. And U is spelled Y-E-W, like the tree. The other books are $4 each, and the series is not in Kindle Unlimited. So when I first started out, uh, when the book first started, I liked it. Corin, the protagonist, rides a motorcycle, and she runs the Sweet Touch Bakery with, a, with her best friend. She's approaching her 30th birthday, and uh, it, it's like lighthearted banter, cozy mystery, cozy, cozy magical mystery kind of setup, you know, with a bakery with just enough of an edge with the motorcycle riding. So it's it's cool. It, it feels like a cool book. Um, but I should have known that the naked male chest on the cover uh, was, uh, you know, that should have been my clue that it wasn't going to stay that way. And it doesn't. So uh, weird thunderstorms breaks out with lavender lightning. And this mysterious castle on a hill appears uh, like just outside town where there was previously a parking lot and a CVS. So uh, and nobody else seems to notice it. And she goes uh, into the castle. She's drawn in, you know, her whole body is feeling weird and all that stuff. And uh, she's feeling all these sexy feelings. And uh, there's a guy in this castle and who causes a strange chill in her chest from whom danger emanates in undeniable waves and so on and so forth, on and on and on. And he is so hot and he's dressed weird and has horns on his head and he's got wings and she wants to leave, but also she doesn't want to leave and they start making out. And I'm like, Oh, and the guy invites her to come somewhere with him. And I'm like, nope, I'm out. So I put the book down, went on to, you know, do something else. And then I came back to do this, you know, to write the review. And I went back to the book to see where I left off. And I noticed that in the very next paragraph, she kicks him in the balls, gets back on her motorcycle and rides away. And I was like, all oh, right, okay, I, I I stopped reading too early. So, um, so I go back to the book and it turns out that nobody else is noticing anything strange. The, the next day she she's at work, she, she drags her best friend outside and points at this castle and her best friend's like, nope, I don't see nothing. I just see the parking lot. And then she drags the cashier out and the cashier doesn't see anything. And uh, so she she decides to take a sick day. Clearly, something's going on in her head. So she goes home and like goes to bed early uh, after a bath and some tea. Then she wakes up in the middle of the night and she's outside in a strange forest. And the leaves look way too green to be in October, which is what it is. So I'm getting a little caught up in the story now, despite that naked chest on the cover. Uh, I might go back to it. All right, next we have The Witch Hunter by Nicole Taylor. And Amira and I both read the beginning of this one because uh, we weren't coordinating well. Uh, so that's the first of six books in the Witch Hunter urban fantasy series. The other books are four dollars each and they are not in Kindle Unlimited. This isn't the first time Taylor's been on this list. We reviewed her book, Arcane Rising, uh, a year ago in June. So, um, so the story is about a couple of vampires, Zach and Sam, and their uh, vampire friend, Liz. And they live in a small town. Zach and Sam died in the Civil War. Uh, they're in their 20s, and they still look like they're in their 20s, but they're actually more than 100 years old. Sam works at Greenhouse, and Zach just drinks a lot. And Liz, uh, who's a new vampire, she was just turned, mysteriously, they don't know who did it, um, she works at a coffee shop. Uh, they don't know of any other vampires in town, so it's kind of mysterious how Liz became a vampire. Then a strange vampire shows up, and the local werewolf pack it started to cause them trouble. So I had a hard time getting into this book. Uh, Zach, Zach the alcoholic seemed like the main character. 
but he's not alcoholic in a fun or interesting way, just in a sad, sad way. And he just sits around and drinks and gets mildly angry at people, including at those vampires. And um, so there's not much novelty in the setting or premise. At the beginning, there isn't much of a compelling plot moving the action forward. So I had a really hard time getting into this book, and I don't think I'll be coming back to it. Um, Amira um, says that she won't be back either. She's read enough to know that it's not for her. And she finds that the book a little unstructured and meandering. And uh, so uh, she's giving up on it as well. And that was the last book on our list today. So let us know if you read any of these books or plan to read them, if you like them, or if you have any other books for us to recommend. And if you would like to join our team and volunteer and help us out with the reviews, my email address is in the description box below, as are all the links to where you can buy our book. And and read all the free fiction on our uh, magazine, uh, on our website. We've got hundreds of short stories. So um, it's, it's a great place to go if you like free science fiction and fantasy, which I guess you do because you're watching this video. Okay, again, shout out to our Patreon supporters. You guys rock. Thank you so, so much. Our next submission period for original uh, short fiction will be in October, so mark your calendars. And thank these guys for making it possible. Yes, thank you. All right, everybody, I hope you like this video. If you do, like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next Friday, because we do this every single week, because I think I have a small case of OCD, and I can't stop. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a good weekend.